Alright guys, welcome back to the shop. This is the final build video for what I'm calling my June Hunter. In the last two videos, we got the bulk of the grinding done and fitted the guard. In this video, we'll be working on this piece of stabilized spalted pecan from Pops Knife Supply and then tying it all together with a custom stainless steel finial. The first thing I do with a block like this is to get all four sides nice and square in the mill. Then I can get on to milling my slot through the block. I found an extra long 3 16ths of an inch end mill to put in my slot, which makes this process way easier than the drill out and broach method. With my slot milled around two thirds of the way through the block, I lay out where I want my threads in the tang and grind down to my marks. On this knife, I'll be threading my tang to a 632 thread. Once I hit my target dimensions, I roll over the corners to make this part of the tang round. At this point, I'm leaving my tang threads extra long to give me some wiggle room. Since the hardness of my tang has been drawn out with a torch, this threading process is fairly easy. I laid out my tang on the side of the handle so I could see where it should exit the back of the block, and then I milled the back angle of the handle with my face mill. Using a 5 16 of an inch end mill, I bored about a quarter of an inch into the block. I followed this up with using a quarter of an inch end mill to mill all the way through to the original slot we created on the front of the handle block. This will provide a shoulder for our finial. As you can see here, my tang fits all the way through the block and the threads come out of the quarter inch hole we made on the back end of the block. Having this set of threads in the center of the quarter inch hole is crucial to ensure a nice fit up of the block to the tang. Next up, we will be machining the finial nut. I am using a piece of 4 16 stainless rod that is 5 16 of an inch in diameter. I chucked up the rod and my new three jaw chuck from littlemachineshop.com, then faced the front of it off before drilling a hole into the center of the rod. If I remember right, I drilled around a 7 8 of an inch hole into the rod, then turned down the rod to a quarter inch along the length of these threads. To provide a little additional support, I used a live center in my tailstock. I'm still learning how to use this lathe and I plan on doing some more intricate pommel nuts in the future, but for now this finial will do just fine. With the finial threaded, I cut it off from the rod and drilled an eighth of an inch hole on the end to allow me to get some leverage when putting it on and off of the knife. At this point, I can cut off the extra length on my threaded tang and also cut off some of the bulk material along the profile of the handle. To make my knife construction and finishing easier, I decided to use some lineup pins in between the guard and the handle. This will ensure that I can take the handle apart and put it back together in the same orientation easily. It's worth noting that this operation would have been a lot easier if I completed it before shaping the guard. I got the job done, but I can tell in the video that I had some movement with the clamping setup. When I have the guard drilled, I can put some temporary short pins into the guard and pin template, slide the handle block onto the knife, super glue the template onto the handle block, and then drill my lineup pins into the block. These lineup pins I'm using are around 1 16th of an inch in diameter and about one inch long. The digital angle finder does a very good job at verifying that the block's face is parallel with the top of my vise. For this knife, I'm drilling these 16th of an inch holes around 800 thousandths of an inch into the block. All in all, this process went pretty smooth. I did get one lineup pin a little too close to my slot on the block and some of the material broke away. However, I still had about a third of the pin hole left and I will be filling this void with epoxy down the road anyways. The fit with the guard was very good and I didn't have any gapping between the handle and the guard. With the whole assembly snugged up, I can scribe some layout lines on my handle to start roughing it in. I started off my handle shaping by taking a page out of Mr. Carl Anderson's book and using a 10 inch cabinet maker's rasp for stock removal. I did end up jumping to the 2x72 to clean up my rasp work and rough in some of my curves. I really haven't shaped many handles like this one and tried to channel my inner Nick Wheeler to file in this transition between the guard and the handle. This operation has got to be one of the hardest things to do in knife making. The challenge is to keep this transition fairly crisp while not over filing on the soft wood at the transition. I'm using a sweet six inch grobbit file that I recently purchased and we'll be putting a link to this file in the description below. Once I have the bulk of the filing done, I use an eight inch contact wheel in my two x 72 belt grinder to give my handle some contours in the hand. To get these swells even and symmetrical, I move back to the 6 inch file. All in all, I spent a ton of time on this handle and learned a lot while doing it. 
I'll mention at the end of the video, but I did find this handle ended up being a bit bulkier than I had planned. I should have tapered it towards the guard, but I guess there are some lessons I have to learn twice. To get this guard's finish where I wanted it, I spent at least three hours doing so. What I ended up doing was hand sanding the inside section of the guard up to a high grit finish, then buffing it with green compound. I did this a few times since I didn't like the finish. Each time I increased the grit until I got up to around a 1500 grit finish before buffing. I left the sides of the guard satin, and I really do like this contrast. Using a Kyle Royer method, I put some brass black on my maker's mark and also spent some time getting my final finish up to an 800 grit here. I'm fairly sure I lost that footage, but just know it took a long time. At this point, it's time for the final glue up. I wrapped my blade in plastic wrap and tape, then hammered on my guard, making sure that it was square and the fit was still good. I mixed up some epoxy and dripped it into the guard recess before affixing my guard jack to the tank. This will hold the guard tight onto the shoulder while this epoxy dries. The epoxy is mainly for sealing the joint, however, it also makes sure the guard doesn't move around during the rest of the assembly. Once the epoxy has cured, I clean up the excess with a piece of brass and then start filling the handle with epoxy. I'm using G-Flex from West Systems Epoxy for this build. I apologize for the bad angles here, but I slide the knife onto the handle and let the excess epoxy slip out of my handle and into the trash can. Lastly, I tighten up the finial on the back of the handle to hold it all together securely. After an hour or so, I check the handle and make sure to wipe off any squeeze out. With a cured handle, all that's left to do is finish off the back and sharpen it. I use my bandsaw to cut off the bulk of the finial material, then grind it flush with the belt sander. I work up grits on the back of the handle with sandpaper to around the 1200 grit, and then hit it with my buffing wheel and some pink compound. To sharpen this knife, I'm going to be using my Win water-cooled sharpening system set to a 20 degree angle. This thing does a pretty decent job at putting a working edge on a knife. I do however think I need to re-level this wheel after a few years of use. I've heard that they make a diamond stone for the Tormac that fits this machine, so I may be giving that a go as well. With a quick strop on my leather belt, this knife is hair shaving sharp. At this point in an irritating turn of events, I noticed a scratch on my blade. It forced me to do the most dangerous thing I've done on this knife, which was to hand sand this scratch out while the knife was sharp. I really took my time here and ended up fixing the issue, but I don't advise you doing this. Alrighty team, so this is how our knife turned out. I'm going to go over, like I always do, kind of a debrief of this knife build, what I liked, what I didn't like about the end product, and what I think I could do better in the future. I've made a handful of hidden tang knives to this point, and to be honest, I'm getting kind of disappointed at myself that I keep having to tell y'all, well, I'm new at this, and this is what I messed up on my hidden tank construction. But I think that just goes to show how difficult making a knife like this can be. There are some little things on this knife that I don't like, and we'll get into that in a moment. But first of all, let's talk about what I do like. I really like how the finish turned out, the 800 grit finish with the steel wool and polishing compound makes a really nice looking hand rub finish. I love the handle material. This is spalted pecan, and I think it looks pretty darn good. The buffing on the guard, I think I could have done a little better at making sure I didn't wash out that line uh, coming and sweeping into the handle right here. But all in all, I think the buffing looks pretty good on a guard like this. I like how the bottom is kind of a mirror finish and the sides are more satin. So I kind of like that contrast there. As far as on the back end, the nut or the uh, finial on the back centers up really nicely. I like its location. It's a little uh, it's a little higher than the center line of the knife, which is good. It's also nice and flush and there's no gapping around it, so I really like how that turned out. The overall size of the blade is pretty good. It's a, it's a hefty blade. It's, uh, I think it has about a, let's see, it has a six and a half inch blade and around a five inch handle. So the handle may actually be a little big for this knife, but uh, I like, it's a pretty, it's a good feel in the hand. That's, that's just what I meant to say there. It's a good feel in the hand. Overall on the guard fit, the guard fit's pretty good. I may see a slight little shadow here and there that I think I could fix in the future, so I'm still working on my guard fitting process to make that rock solid. Now onto some things that I don't like about this knife. First and foremost, the guard is slightly tilted backwards. And I actually tried not to do this, and I must have messed up somewhere in the process. I may have actually messed up in the opposite direction. So next time I need to make sure that my guard has a slight 
forward cant instead of a backwards cant like this one. So that really throws off the lines of the knife in my opinion. It also makes my maker's mark look crooked as you can tell from this angle here. So that's something I definitely need to fix in the future. My handle overall is a little bulky. I didn't taper the front around the guard as much as I should have. I should have tapered this down significantly thinner and had it widen towards the back and here it's just pretty straight. So that's something I'll definitely fix in the future. It makes this look chunky in my opinion. So in the future I'll make sure to make a more sleek handle. And I've, I've made that mistake before and it's really disappointing that I made the mistake again. So I, I was not happy when I, when I got towards the end and I'm like darn, I didn't taper that handle did I? So that's something I'll fix in the future for sure. Uh, but overall, like I said, I, I like this knife. Those are my two biggest gripes, the guard and the handle. Uh, it's going to be a good performer. It's going to be a perfectly good knife to use. I think I'll probably keep it because of those issues, but I may use this knife. I may not just throw it in the safe as a failure. I may actually use it because it held up pretty good during the performance test and I get boxes to open on the reg here at Redbeard Ops. So I'll, uh, I'll use this for my Amazon packages. So with that being said, I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button down below. Consider subscribing to the channel, and I'll catch you all on the flip side.